Hey everybody, we're going to be doing a video on this little unit right here. And I'm going to show you some real good benefits of this unit. And I'm going to show you a problem that it came with that I fixed and it's still worth buying. Um, look below the video, I'm going to put links to everything I get. Now some of it is affiliate marketing and I can make, uh, I can make about 35 cents on that if you... You know, so buy 50 or buy 100, buy 300 of them, and then I can pay for that one. So um, over here, there is... Uh, uh, a whole pile of parts. We're going to be doing a video on this soon. When you see what this is, you'll understand clearly what it means and why it's important. And there's a huge reason for this. Now, that right there is going to help me with the use of one of these things. And this thing here is important, and hopefully it's not another screw up. Um, I had I had to refund out one of those things, and I got another one finally come in. It was a hell of a hell of a task. But this one here is supposed to be a better one. So, well, it junk down there. So, um, this thing here is going to be a major thing that you might want one of. And the reason is very simple. If you own an RV or you own, a, you want a backup power system and you don't mind it running off the grid, but when the grid goes down because people elect morons, uh, you, you can, you can solve it. You can solve it easy. So this is all about this. Um, and it will be the next video of that and that over there. And, and then very soon you're going to see, and if there's another video going back a little bit, you'll see kind of a drawing that lays some of this out and it's going to get in depth, real in depth. It's going to show you how to do it. And you're going to learn how to take a battery like that power queen, a bigger one. And then I'm going to real quick, make this little shot out here. This is about 11 o'clock at night. I was getting in from a job site out in Fort Stockton. So this is my battery bank and it's big and it's a whole bunch. It's 24 plus eight, so 32 total of 235 amp hour batteries. Now that means basically 16, 12 volt, 235 amp hour batteries. So you do the math, I'm at 3000 plus amp hours. And then I got this one that I just, it's old. Um, this one was in our motor home. We got a big 40 foot pusher and this was in it and it's I'm uh, bringing it back to life um, And if you want to recover a battery that's old and dying that one there's four years old My wife leaves lights on all the time. So a little Epsom salt bring it back to life and right now She is at nearly 90% and bring itself up. So all right now back in here my battery bank at 11 o'clock at night is because I got the air conditioner running. I got the air conditioner in the office running. I got another air conditioner. In the, so I got three AC units running. Is ticking around, see? It's ticking around. And so tw I'd say 12.4 is my balance. And that is giving me, if you look up here, there's your battery meter. That's giving me about, I don't know, 40%, 30, 38% DOD. Okay. The reason that we're working with these things and we're working with this thing and we're working especially with this thing is because if you know anything about solar charge controllers, you understand that sometime around, in, mo in a lot of people's cases, um, at one o'clock, two o'clock, sometimes as late as three o'clock in the afternoon, this will drop down to no amperage at all. So it's not feeding any amperage. It tailored, it uh, tapered itself down, and it's not feeding any amperage. But you still got four or five hours of sunlight. Now, yeah, you kick on something, and it'll shoot back up and draw off the panels and balance back out and shut off. But instead of getting its full power, it'll shut off. So we've got a system that we're setting up to where it pulls off this and charges one of these, and then at 3 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the morning, or probably in this case, I would set it for midnight, um, it will start dumping this with a BMS set at 80% stop, and it'll start dumping it backwards using this equipment back into my lead acid. Now you're like, my God, that's stupid. Why don't you just buy 50 of these? I don't know, you got 40 grand? 
<laughs> all them batteries out there cost me about 3700 bucks to, to buy one quarter of those batteries in this right here would cost me four thousand dollars four thousand dollars okay so i am saving i am saving 60 cents on the dollar doing this and the truth of the matter is is if you can keep lead acid at above 50 percent depth of discharge dod you can literally add 50 to 60 percent lifespan to them so i'll have eight and ten year lead acid batteries just like that is claiming to be eight and ten year it won't be any difference but i'll have saved about seven thousand dollars cash which allows me to put in more solar buy more toys things like that you know um this little doodad right here is a Vever. It's 45 amp. I wrote 35 amp because I readjusted it. And this is what we're going to show you here. This will charge lithium. It'll charge lead acid. It'll charge nickel metal hydride. It'll charge uh, LTO, uh, uh, lithium titanium ox. Um, oh, I can't even pronounce it. Um, it'll, it'll charge NICAD. It'll charge this thing. It'll do it all. It'll charge anything in the neighborhood that you want. And you can get a 65 uh, amp model. You can get a 75 amp model. This one here is about 50, 55 dollars, and I'll put a link below the video to it. And yes, it has to have something done to it when you get it. It's made in China, so of course it does. So it comes with these little puny 12 gauge wires. Little now they call it siliconized wires, so you know it can handle like seven million watts. Oh bull crap! So what I did is I removed them and. I didn't have any 10 gauge, but I had some 8 gauge siliconized wire laying around and I put it inside and soldered it to it. You'll see there's some nice big spots for that. And you can do it. It's not difficult. Don't trip. You can do it and put you one of those nice little, you know, 60 amp plugs on it, make it sweet and pretty and all that good stuff. I just don't trust 12 gauge wires up in a cabinet in something producing over 30 amps. I don't do it. And you shouldn't either. But as far as the unit, it's bulletproof. Now, this one right now is hooked up, going backwards to that battery bank right over there. That is just waste slave batteries that we use when I put my wind turbine in. They're going to hit it first, so they get the cook effect and the and the uh, pulse effect, and the rest of the charge goes into my big bank. Now, you don't have to do that. I do it because, well, I have those. They're just kind of laying around. They came out of another trailer we sold. So this right here. I've taken all the screws out, and there's a crap load of them, so you'll see there's a little pile right there. They're little bitty things, and I've taken all the screws out, and I'm going to open this up. Make sure it's not plugged in, you know. I mean, if you're into that kind of thing, man, I don't blame you. I, I know some people like that, but we're going to open her up, and it's just a clamshell partial 50-50 clamshell setup. And I'm going to fold it over to make sure my wires are all clear in here and everything is safe before I decide to do anything with it. Now, currently, I've got it hooked up to 12-volt jumper cables, like I said, going all the way back. And we're going to send amperage back, but I'm going to be showing you what you can do with this thing, okay? Now, the first thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to go ahead and pull power from it so that we can show you how to adjust the voltage. The voltage is adjustable right down there. You see that little screw right there? On that trimmer, you can adjust the voltage. On this trimmer up here next to these big shunts, you can adjust the current. Current limiting is a very handy thing to have. As this thing gets to the top end of the battery, to the setting you make, this will keep dropping in amperage it's feeding the battery on purpose. That's what it's engineered for. It won't like old battery chargers just keep pushing and cook your batteries. This is about the safest you can use, and it's an RV. Uh, converter. It's a converter. Remember, RV converter is not an inverter. It's a converter. So it takes AC current from the island or the boat yard or the or the RV park or your neighbor's house when he ain't looking or whatever you're doing with it. You know, your business. Um, <laughs> your buddy's Tesla. It takes that power from there, converts it into a charging system and a supply voltage. Now, this thing here, if you turn start turning a lot of lights in your RV, it'll slowly start picking up power. It don't just, you've heard these things that buzz like hell in the back of your RVs, the old ones. This ain't one of them. It does have a fan. You do want it in the cabinet, and you do want to add bigger wires, and you do want to use something like a good safe terminal set like that. Now, 
So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. And those capacitors do star charge, so that sometimes it will arc. And then I'm going to plug this in. And this is a uh, funny how I'm doing it because I'm pulling power off one battery bank to feed the other. Now, over here we have, oops, sorry, we have 14.49 volts. And I'm powered. You see that? And the little lights on and the fans running. All right. Now I'm going to get over here with this screwdriver and I'm going to show you here, right up in there, where I'm going to adjust that voltage. So if I've got lithium batteries and I want to adjust, there we go, I want to adjust that voltage, I can just spin her up. All right, so if I got, say, I want to uh, bulk charge, I want to cook my lead acid batteries a little bit, well, I can just shoot that baby up to 15.75 volts. But I'll drop my amps down to, you know, 25 amps, and then I can clean my lead-acid batteries. But if I'm just charging some NICAD batteries, oh, wait a minute, I don't need that. Hell, let me get down here where it's safe. I'm backing their own off here. So I got these here NICAD batteries that I got from my cousin's wheelchair. And so I'm going to run them in right there about 13.65. Yeah, that'll, that'll do just fine. I got some tool batteries. That, oh, well, let me get them back up here around 14.10. You get my drift now. So this one here, I can adjust it up for lithium. Now I do run this at 14.5 for both lead acid and lithium because the new WIPO battery has um, a pretty substantial BMSs in them now. And they will disconnect the charge on voltage and they'll fault out typically around 15 volts if it's a 12 volt battery. So we're gonna set that one right there for that. Now we're gonna get over here and we're going to get this clamped on. So I'm going to clamp it, lay this thing down and clamp it. All right, now I got it clamped on. And we are getting now the charge going into the battery bank right there because it's powered up and it's getting the charge going into the battery bank. So we're sitting at 32 amps and you'll see as it goes into the battery bank, it starts to taper down and it'll continue. Now I'm trying to charge up a lot of batteries. So it, it, this is not like your boat battery or your trolling battery or any of those things this this is pulling power uh, so we're going to go and we're going to see how it's reacting right quick now this is the unit that i use to share power so this one is reaching uh, uh but these batteries are reaching 12.8 i know it's showing what it's pushing over there at 14 but it's reaching 12.8 and this thing is kicking on and it's starting to share the power with the battery bank that's on this one you see so you got two of them there two separate battery banks. They are balancing each other with this thing. You can see this in a previous video I've got. Go look back, subscribe to the channel, go look back, and you'll see the video that relates to this. It allows me to put the brand new batteries with the year old batteries without creating a parasitic discharge uh, against my new batteries. And I end up with all the power I want. So I can literally have five year old batteries down here and day old batteries right there and put this in the middle and get the actual surge power and, and demand power I need without spending so much money, so stay with that. Okay, back over here. This thing here, we're gonna to go to the current. All right, so I'm gonna set this uh, this $7.62 phone up to look at this because, you know, I got it like that, man. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm making that money. Actually, I ain't hardly working at all, I'm sorry. I couldn't take their, their weird shot. I got a heart stunt, so. They don't want me driving truck no more. There you go. All right. So I'm going to set that baby up right there. And there we go. Now, so you're looking at 32.10 amps. That little device up in here, I'll show it to you. I'm going to turn it, and it's going to, going clockwise, I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop the amperage on it. So it's going to, I don't want to. I've only got, say I've only got two deep cycle batteries and hitting them with 50 amps or 40 amps or even 30 amps is just straight stupid. So let's go ahead and knock them down. We're going to take this down, take it down, take it down. You see the amps going out to the batteries? I'm going to drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it. All right, I feel pretty safe leaving Grandma sleeping in that trailer tonight. This thing's only putting, say, uh, right at 20 amps in those batteries. So they won't heat up, they won't off gas, and well, we're not all gonna giggle about what we did when we burned it down, right? Now, on the other hand, this is a 45 amp controller, and as I'll show you here in just a second, right over here, this wire, um, how I replaced it, um, I can bring this thing all the way up 45 amps. 
I don't want to run it at 45 amps because anything made in China, if you run it over 90% of its rating capacity, you'll probably blow it up. We all know that. All right, so I hope you're going the wrong direction. That's the story of my life, right? All right, so I'm going to go and I'm going to jack them ampies up. Here comes more ampies. Now that's your amps going to these batteries over here, going through this cord, the jumper cables to that battery bank. Now it'll handle about 50 amps without getting too hot. But so here I'm going to go take it all the way up. Now this thing here will adjust up to about 52 amps maxed out. So this is a 45 amp charger. The batteries are, are sucking it in, right? Hold on here. There we go. 45, 45 amp charger. Now. It, you see see how the batteries are pulling it in? Every time that thing clicks over there, it surges. See it surge? I don't, I don't think you can hear it click. That's it clicked off, there it goes. So it's just giving us a little fool's reading there. But there it is, 44. Now I'm gonna turn it back down. Here we go, I'm gonna take it down while it's connected there. Let it unclick again, because I've exceeded my voltage. There we go, back to 43, I'll turn it down. Yep. All right. So there we go. Let it click off. So we're right in the ballpark there. All right, so I'm running mine about 32 amps. And the reason I run at 32 amps is because it's safe. All right, so what we're doing is you see this little one right down there. We're turning it clockwise to reduce. We're turning it counterclockwise to bring your amps up. Now, this is a generally a 55 amp, but you'll notice how they've done those right there to make it a 45 amp max out. As far as those wires are concerned, if you look down in here, you'll see those large solder pads. They're heavy. And I just tend my wire, my eight gauge wire, and I soldered it on there and it went through. What's really shocking is the grommets were perfect fit for eight gauge and they were loose as a goose turd for 12 gauge. So I would recommend replace it with at least 10 gauge. It, it don't need eight. 10 is fine for 35 to 40 amps. 45, it'll handle it for a while as long as it's not over two feet long, but replace it. This is actually that's a fault item in it that you need to fix when you buy it but you already know how that works right where does it come from so most things that come out of china are uh kind of like this then there's some things coming out of china that's like a freaking brick i can't kill it and then there's some things that come out of china that um you know it says 60 amp controller and it's probably good for 50 and you buy that and you know that when you do it because it's 35 40 bucks right so that's what you do right all right this was a pretty simple layout of how to deal with this. We're going to get to these videos very soon and show you this thing in the next video coming up. I'm going to use this 3001 inverter. What's in that box, the replacement for what I had to get replaced. And we're going to see, will it compete with the Power Queen? I'm thinking maybe, maybe not. Who knows? But we're going to put it through the whole system. We're going to put it through everything, and we're going to test it. We're just going to actually hook it up, let it run the damn air conditioner all night. And I've got a power supply right there that I purposely am using this so that I can make sure that when it dies, that this don't go out like it did in the last video, because the last minute of the video is the only reason we knew how much power that other Power Queen did, which was more than what it claimed. So Power Queen, look below the video. I'll put a link to that. That thing does what it claims, and then some. I like that. We don't know yet. All right, so y'all, you look into these. Uh, the link below for this thing, if you're still even with the video or you haven't gone for the 13th beer, it's going to show you numerous models. Pick what you're looking for. There's how you adjust it. They're the same in that neighborhood. All right, guys, y'all be good. It works, don't it? That's going to be fun.